Water. We all use it, we all drink it, we all need it. But have you ever wondered where your water comes from? How do we keep our drinking water safe? As you're about to find out, it doesn't just fall out of the sky. And we all play an important role in the process. We are following water in the CBRM from the source to the tap. Hi, I'm Bria. The journey of water is a continuous repeating process. The water cycle. This cycle is water's way of recycling itself. It accumulates in clouds through evaporation from oceans, lakes, and ponds, and transpiration from the leaves of plants. It returns to Earth as rain, snow, and hail. This water then collects in our water sources and becomes source water. We then tap into the water cycle to get our drinking water. It's a pretty complicated process, so let's head straight to the source and see where it all begins. So what is source water? Source water is an accumulation of water in its natural state. There are two types of source water. Surface water, which is the stuff we see in lakes and ponds, and groundwater, which we extract using wells. In the CBRM, we have four surface water supplies. Pottle Lake, located just off of Highway 125 near North Sydney, supplies North Sydney, Sydney Mines, and residential communities in that area. The raw water chemistry is such that it requires very little treatment, making for some safe and delicious tap water. Kilkenny and Waterford Lake supply New Waterford and area. The lakes are three kilometers apart and are connected through an underground pipeline that uses gravity to move water from Kilkenny Lake to Waterford Lake. The drinking water source for the community of Lewisburg, Kelly Lake, collects water from a number of large lakes, ponds, and streams that drain into it. It even supplies the fortress of Lewisburg itself. McCasco Brook Dam Reservoir has the largest water capacity and the longest name of all of our water sources. When full, it contains 16 billion liters of water. That's enough to supply Glace Bay, Dominion, Reserve Mines, Donkin, Port Morion, and Birch Grove for four years without a refill. But all of our source water supplies refill from the one and a half liters of precipitation we receive each year. The Middle Lake Road well field, located near the Myra Road area, supplies Sydney and area, Westmount, and Coxheath with drinking water. It consists of 11 production wells, with depths greater than 120 meters below ground. CBRM also has small community wells that supply water to groups of homes in Floral Heights and Gardner Mines. These sources contain the water that we will eventually drink, so it's important that they are kept clean and protected. To learn more about source water protection, I met with Britt Roscoe, the watershed coordinator with the CBRM Water Utility to discuss what we can do to help protect our water sources. So Britt, what can you tell me about protecting our water supplies? Well, the first thing is to know where it is. So this uh, map's available on our CBRM website. And if you go online and look at it, uh, you'll look at your community where you live, and it'll link you to where your water supply is. For example, if you were in Glace Bay, you'd know your water supply was McCasker Brook Dam. And if you're out looking for McCasker Brook Dam, on the land, you'll find uh, one of those signs. I've put those up at all the entry points in the, in the water supply. So the water supply is more than just the lake or reservoir itself? Oh, definitely. Like you see on the map here. For example, that's the lake. But we look at the watershed. That, that's a drainage basin. That All the water that flows into that area ends up in the lake. So you can see on this poster over here, if a, if a drop of water hits the top of that ridge, it's going to flow all the way down across the land and into the lake. So basically, anything that's in the watershed area will end up in our water supply. Sadly true. If there's garbage or oil, other waste and contaminants, as the water flows across it, it'll take that material and put it into the water and ends up in the water supply. Now, we expect naturally occurring compounds to end up in the water. We treat for that. But if there's activity going on in the watershed we don't know about, producing fuel and oil, things like that, that causes uh, yeah. a lot more problems with our treatment, and that can get more costly. So there are things we can and can't do in the watershed area. Yeah, and that's why I put up those signs over there. 
As the signs show, swimming, littering, tree cutting, garbage dumping, use of any kind of vehicle such as an ATV, dirt bike, boats, personal watercraft, snowmobiles, that can lead to contamination of the water supply and therefore those are prohibited. Vehicle use in particular can result in fuel or oil entering the water supply and these substances cause big troubles at the treatment plant. Vehicles also cause soil to break up into silt and mud and these can clog up the uh, water filters and intakes. And part of my job, working with watershed committees, we, f we identify, prioritize and manage these risks to the water supply. And the three primary human risks to the water supply are highway traffic, vehicle use within the water supply and illegal dumping of garbage. These are all costly and hazardous problems. But these can be avoided if people simply know where they are and what not to do, correct? Sure, and we don't have a problem with folks using our watersheds for non-contaminating activities like hiking, snowshoeing, cross-country skiing. We encourage those. And bring a camera. They're, they're scenic natural areas. Great, Britt. So what sort of courses would prepare someone for a job like yours? Well, in high school, you'd want your sciences. You'd want biology, physics, chemistry, and... Uh, probably some geography would be helpful. When you get into post-secondary courses, then you want to think about GIS, that's, that's very important. Uh, there's a lot of good environmental science programs, a community planning course would be good, and hydrogeology would be a nice thing to add to the mix. Now, a lot of my job is not so much science as working with people, so I'd encourage uh, maybe high school students to start, maybe volunteer with ACAP Cape Breton, work with others, or uh, there's a Cape Breton Young Naturalist program that's really good too. That's awesome. Thanks, Britt. The first step in protecting our source water is being able to identify the location of the watershed. The second is making sure we all do our part in protecting our water sources. It's important to remember that the cleaner the water is at the source, the easier it will be to treat. Join us next time as we filter through the different ways water is treated, as we continue our journey from the source to the tap. Hi, I'm Tappy. Help us to protect this valuable resource by getting involved in your local source water protection committee. Contact the CBRM Watershed Coordinator at 902-563-5551. Please report any illegal dumping or other violations you witness within the watershed to the CBRM Solid Waste Hotline or to CBRM Engineering and Public Works. This film was brought to you by the CBRM Water Utility and ACAP Cape Breton. Special thanks to our host, Bria Ross, Britt Roscoe, Watershed Coordinator, 